Okay, so it's a Board of Health meeting Thursday night, March 3rd, 2022, 6 p.m. Um, been recorded and present is Sue Braska. Mackenzie Kane. Jean Nelson. Tom Fitzgerald. Okay. Um, any public comment? There's nobody in, nobody? No. Nobody. Okay, so we can go right to the minutes. Did everybody get the minutes from um, that I sent out last week? Yes. 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 Um, a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I'll second it. All in favor? Uh, Jean Nelson, I. Mackenzie King, yes. Sue Brasley. So they're all set. Um, So do we want to go right into Tom's report or do we want to talk about, we're going to have an applicant, we want to talk about our secretary. We have a secretary, Cynthia Barton, that's going to start tomorrow with Jessica Pelly. She's been, what, five hours a week right now? At least. Okay. Well, I looked at the budget and according to the budget divided by the weeks remaining, she would actually have about eight and a half hours. Okay. So, you know, but well, that didn't include, you know, some hours that um, Jess would still have. So, okay, so she could work between five and eight. Yes. Or five and seven, and then Jess would have hours too. Yeah. Does she know that? Does Jess um, that she could work? On? I just. All right. Mathematically figured it out. You going to see it tomorrow or anything? Or? I'll see Jess tomorrow. Yeah. And then I'll figure out how many hours. Because in the beginning, she'll probably need more hours. Right. All right. Um, interview coming up at 6.30. So go ahead, Tom. Well, I'll take that COVID numbers. Um, in February, there was uh, 45 cases so far. It was a significant drop from uh, January's 477 cases. Um, so 45 total for the whole, because it was 23 the last two weeks of February, right? Correct. So a total of 45 for all of February. Uh, uh, that was um, February, yeah. Um, actually, that was that wasn't the final uh, day of February, but the that the final day is um, there was 57 total. Um, broken down under uh, seven under 18 years old, six over 60 years old, and out of the 57, 18 vaccinated. Um, Can I have that when you're done at the end of the meeting that you're reading off of? Uh, yes. Put them in, yes, and I add the, oh. the beauty of it, yeah, which is related. Um, yeah, I'm not good at our charts. epi um, from a grant from West Franco Nagawa uh, shared those charts uh, for January and February, which I have posted uh, now. So people can actually look at those charts. And the fire charts are a little easier for folks to read. Um, and they, they're, you know, they're a little more helpful. And it's gonna be a monthly basis. We had two, two meetings that were weekly and now um, um, EPH meeting is going to go to every two weeks because uh, so dominant, dominated by COVID, you know, they don't need to meet. Um, is often. Can I ask me, um, how do we find out, and I had asked Valerie this, but she doesn't have access, how many people have been vaccinated in town, like the percentage, do you know? Like, how do we get those numbers? How many people have been fully vaccinated? Like we used to get with um, Kate, people who've had one shot. It's coming from. Yes, <clears throat> it comes from Maven. <clears throat> is yeah. that what is that what you wanted? Do you want that particular number? Well, just yeah, it would be interesting to know because we haven't had we haven't had that information in a while. Just to know how many people were vaccinated in town because we were kind of lagging behind. That's what do you just, mean by lagging behind? You mean in terms of the total of, number of people that are vaccinated? No, in terms of Massachusetts, right? In so, the county right. of okay. Southwark was lagging behind. Do you have access to Maven? No, I'm not a Maven. And Valerie is though. Yeah, she but she emailed me and she said she couldn't, she didn't have access to it. Oh, I know because that's an MIA, that's MIIA. Yeah. And that's the nursing link only. Right. Um, I don't have a nurse. You know what? I can get that. 
I can get that another, another way. I can ask another nurse to, to get that on another town. I yeah, think, so, for, so the next meeting. I think they can get that. Yes, that's what it is. She's, she, we asked her that because, because it's Maven. She gets a lot of information with Maven, but the vaccination rates are <clears throat> only on MIIA. MIIA? Yeah. Which is you're the, the nurses. You're the nurse. Massachusetts Immunization Information Association. I, I don't Agency. think it's association, Agency. but it, that's what it stands for. Massachusetts yeah, Immunization. Okay. I'll get that. I'll get it for you. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. What you're saying. So I, we, we posted those on, on the, uh, our town's website. Hopefully that'll lay some of the concerns that people have about not getting information. You know, some of the charts that were on, uh, Jim and I talked about Milton, that, <coughs> um, that were on the web page, our previous web page had a lot of information that was historical. And some of the, a lot of, I'm not sure a lot of, there's a lot of interested people wanting to know what happened in July and August so and January. Not. So we, we just kind of move it up. So that's why these, these are the monthly now. Um, and uh, so, Of course, it still doesn't take into account the at-home test. Right. Um, anything else on COVID numbers besides getting the getting the <clears throat> immunization rate, which I will have for the next meeting? Um, and well, applications at uh, thirty-five Lauren Lane, um, and application sign up one ninety-four Granville Road. <clears throat> the reason I'm putting those in there now, I, and I've talked to. Kyle, program inspector about this as well, is putting it on there, uh, the e-permitting process, because well permits are, are, are separate than septic system well loaders tied together for so long uh, because they're kind of naturally together, except if you have town water. But I like to have a separate permitting process because it's getting a little cumbersome to, to deal with it, um, the paperwork. So if we have it on the e-permitting e process, uh, you know, to track it. Uh, <clears throat> which, so who has um, access to to that program to, like, do you go in and say, say okay, do you go in and indicate that this person has a well application? Correct, yes. Approved, and so we have a password, log yeah. in and put his stuff in there. Right, which which brings me to the other part of the permitting. They have a, a Board of Health module. Um, and I contacted the, the folks down in Boston, where it's out of, uh, that, that does it. Southwick's building, and uh, he's going to give me a demonstration on Zoom next Tuesday. So if anybody wants to <laughs> sit in on it, but in other words, it's the same thing as the e-permitting, except for boards of health. So that's one thing I sent you information out the last time. Not necessarily inexpensive, um, but um, I think it there's looking into for the future because it, it really brings us brings us in performance with the other other departments. So which is, which, if we're able to put the well on for e-permitting, right? Yes. So the building can see it. Can we put the septic system on there too? I can ask, but I think it's kind of like a um, every time you add something, they're going to charge. So I can find out what the costs, you know, um, what that's going to be in it. You know, since it's on the it's on the buildings tab right now, the building department's paying the, the freight for licensing right now and so if we add something there may be a there, there will be a cost because they're not going to do anything for free they're going to add that module but it's going to cost us money so depending so on for every is. permit it's a new module uh no every, well no they have a they have a set for each each permit comes in and there's so many modules on for, for the permit so no as long as the permits as long as the modules for the permit stay the same there won't be any cost but we're adding something so we're for each module not for each permit there'll be an added for cost yes and the board of health is a whole suite of sub modules if you will which i'm going to learn more about it and the board of health system would include septic and restaurants. absolutely restaurants food establishments exactly and again, they, you know, they, they, I think they have, uh, they have wells, I think, separately in that and also uh, swimming pools. 
So if you get a, say camps. you get a board of health one, can you build and access the board of health to see where we oh, are? Oh, it'd be tied in, absolutely. Tied yeah, in. yeah. Okay. But I, I still, I still, I mentioned this last time, and I think when Mr. Dee was here, that I think on the end of the project, the, the process for where we used to have the yellow cards, we don't have anymore. That that should be utilized now, and it's not. There, there's no. There's only the permits acceptance at this point at this stage. There's no final sign-offs on that same process that you permit. There's no final sign-offs. There's the original one saying, yeah, we approve the application for the septic or the well or you know conservation sign-off, but not at the end of it, because there's you know for that for that matter, the uh, DPW. There's no uh, for the driveway permits. There's there's nothing about the end of the process, it's just the beginning. So it's like the I've talked to Kyle about this tying it up. So we have a, a COC the same way we have in the right. first part, we have it on the second part. I don't know that, but how much that's going to cost, but I'll talk to the uh, owner of the company and because uh, he's putting the presentation on uh, next Tuesday. For me. So essentially, Kyle could issue an occupancy permit without the Board of Health giving final approval on the septic system installation. Yes. It's uh, a sign off, yeah. Maybe not the installation, but the sign off. Correct, right. and that's been done, but not just not by him, but in, in past. And I'd like to clean clean that up. Yeah, now. and that would be the same with conservation. I mean, if there, right. you could say you this is the way you want it. Well, who's going out and checking? Do you put the did, were the heat bills put in? For right. example, that's just another example. Or the driveway permit was approved. Well, was it put in the way it was approved before the? Building is 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 the certificate of occupancy is is given by the building inspector. Right, and, and that, that there's a link, there's a gap in that with right the conservation now. commission. Yeah, it's happened with and board health. The owners living in the dwelling had to go back and um, apply yeah. for a permission, essentially, and do a public hearing and have the whole nine yards so that they no longer have. A conservation restriction on their deed, so they couldn't get a clear deed unless the restrictions were removed. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> two Saddle Mountain Road was a sign off, uh, perk test, and two Birchwood. Is Two Saddle Mountain Road the campground? No, but, but since you brought it up, uh, <laughs> the campground was sold. Last year, right, uh, twenty one, and uh, they have some permits to acquire from us, uh, and they also have some permits that need to be acquired for the rest of the town. So they have some work to do before. What are they um, doing? Planning on doing well. They, they're going to need a, a pool operator. Um, campground. Yeah, the campground pool operation. Food. They're not going to be serving food. Um, they said. Uh, just candidate. retail, They're just not... the non-perishable uh, food okay. that they don't need a permit for. Um, but I go up, I do inspect the bathhouses and what they have. They, they said they took down the, the, the children's uh, swing sets. There's not, they're kind of like moving away from kids, some of the manager said, um, or just not having as many kids around, uh, making them older. So uh, I met with the, the new manager for the new ownership. And, uh, Discussing the permits. Oh, in the Title Five, uh, the Title Five that was done last year, um, there was a needs further evaluation by the Board of Health from the Title Five inspector, and, and I don't see what that what happened as a result of that because I don't, it doesn't, I don't see anything in the file that <clears throat> said what what they wanted, what the inspector wanted out of the Board of Health. Um, Chris, we're hearing of it. Yeah. Okay. So. That's so I, I mentioned that to these to the people, and she's going to bring back the owners. I said, Whatever, we, we have to establish what happens so we can, uh, you know, move forward. So make sure that's we got a clean title five because you were, you were asked to do something and we're still working on it. I guess and I can ask Mr. Franco um, about what his recollection was. So we talked about the Two fourteen sheep pasture road update. It's Frederick Heron Circle. Heron Circle. Um, 
the heat issue um, was uh, an, um, so what is this? The, the occupant apparently wanted heat a little warmer than is required by law. And this so is just one unit now? This is one unit. Um, and, and the heat works. It's just that uh, it only goes up to 70. So if you wanted three degrees, you were using space, space heaters, electric heaters and stuff. And that, they're not required to do that. So um, as long as the heat is capable of you know, reaching 68 degrees, Day, it's actually a little warmer at 70 and, and 64 at night that meets the, the housing code. Um, so did you do a temperature test no, on I didn't it? Do a temperature test, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't have the don't have the, the capacity to do that right now, but they have the fixed, they had fixed this. Um, they had a, a heating and air conditioning person come in. And I'll do a follow-up uh, with that with the owner of it. But you need a a register, a uh, Temperature register log, which um, has some its own problems because there's no way to control. Because I used to have it when I worked in Westfield years ago. You can put it anywhere you want, so it records the temperature, but depending on where you put it, you know. And I'm not there, so you know, I'm not saying yeah. I'm not saying this would happen there, but you can. It doesn't have. Um, it's not tamper proof, but so you say so the temperature thing. So. Um, I'd be, I'd be content since no one else is complaining about the heat in the whole building. This is just one unit. I've been inside the building. It's, you know, sneaking kept. Um, and, and they have, uh, they have a signed statement from the, the, uh, the heating and air conditioning people that the thing's working fine. That's not the problem. They just want it warmer than this. So, uh, I could go back and speak to the tenant and see if they're still having, having concerns. But uh, at that point, Code says 68 and they wanted 78. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> so there's really no basis for the complaint. It's, um, we can argue that, yeah. The other issue that we had there was that people were complaining about water dripping. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I actually, uh, Kyle was with me, the building inspector, and we actually didn't see any of that uh, at the time. We did see. We did talk to a bunch of people uh, in tenants that they're all complaining about it. So I, I don't doubt that it existed, but right then it, it wasn't it wasn't the evidence that there was water pouring uh, onto the usually in the kitchen over the vent, over the vent, over the stove. So um, they were very receptive. And they had their maintenance people in a mover go upstairs, and they found that they had done some insulation work. They're trying to find out. If they, somehow the insulation work caused uh, some of the moisture to be trapped. Um, haven't gotten any new complaints, but I just talked to the, the woman that's uh, the manager, and she's well aware of it. And um, my name. Oh, hi, Alex. Have a seat. Oh, yeah. Good. Hello. Hi. Yeah, that's fine. Um, wanna, yeah, we got, we got a few minutes before the, the, you're, uh, you're up. Okay. Alex. Tom Fitzgerald. Hi, Tom. Nice to meet you. Mackenzie Kane. Hi. Hi. Nice, nice to see you. Jude Nelson. So, so Okay. Sue Brasco. Hi. Hi. How are you? You can sign in. That's sure. Time finishes up. So they found that there's a problem with the installation of the insulation. Well, yeah. <laughs> but they, they really they really weren't sure that um, even the, the roofing company that it's undetermined it's indetermined why the, it's happened. There there is venting out. There was a concern that it was venting inside the crawl space in the attic, and then the moisture was going up and it was coming back down because they had no place to go. But no, the, they are vented. They're vented into the Roof, so it's something else. That's what we first thought. Kyle and I thought it just bent into the, into the space and it condenses and the moisture comes back in, but that's not the case. So they're still they're still trying to figure it out. So we don't. I don't have any issue yet. They don't have an issue yet, but okay. I'll keep up. Very responsive, though. I have to say, the the person that's a manager of the.
I mentioned DPH, Western Mass Public Health Association. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, 503 College Highway. Uh, that was just... Um, Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna circle back to that. Um, I think after we finish with Alex, we can we can circle back also the discussion in, in the draft on the finding of food establishments letters because I have a bunch of information I, I put in your packets. Western Mass Public Health Association, which I was have been involved with right along when I wasn't working here. Um, it's an educational service organization that we did. Um, that we did totally Title V presentations. We can assist in nursing uh, groups with their presentations. Uh, we do food service training, it's educational, uh, the western part, of, east western part of the state. Not unlike the Mass Association of Health Officers, which are statewide, they're a little more local, 100 communities. So um, we're we're looking at a training for. Title V in, in late late May. And we also have a training that we're looking at for um, serve safe training for uh, food inspectors. So when both, is that gonna be? Uh, date to be, I think that's so, gonna be May, so but we haven't finished, we haven't finalized the date yet. Can that be on Zoom? Will that be on Zoom? No, it's gonna be in person. Serve safe? Yeah. The Title V? Both, yeah, both can be in person. We had a security training here about uh, security for what? Computers, cyber emails. security. I missed it. I missed it. Well, yeah. they, they had a presentation from a gentleman from Wally Computer uh, that talked about um, how to protect your your data and, and especially emails from hackers and ransomware and things like that. And through a whole litany of all the options and what people are trying to do to, to steal your identity and, and or your money. So it was, that was pretty, pretty enlightening. What about um, contact tracing meeting? Is that with West Springfield? Yes, the contact tracing meeting was actually those charts that was that charts. we had in, in, in all the towns that were involved, the three towns all showed a remarkable decrease in the number of positives. And the towns are... West Springfield, Southwick, and Agalon. Agalon. Right. So, um, Mary Thomas created those. She's just, she's our deputy, and uh, uh, there's another a contact tracer. Their workload has decreased um, a lot, as you can imagine. So, uh, that's really good news. Also, met. It's been a few minutes. So I want to keep to the six thirty. Yeah. Uh, the West Side, uh, met with the West Side Health Director um, about some new funding funding opportunities coming up for fiscal year. Uh, as you know, um, we already have one for the, the six town grant for, for a nursing grant, a position and a half. We technically still don't have the money yet, even though we have um, approval and the signed documents from both the state and, and our local select board. So as soon as we get those, and actually we were told we could proceed with putting those out. And so I think Tammy was going to be head, headlining that, um, the application for the nurse. So that, that's going to be advertised. That she was going to be. So you're going to put that up? Are, you going, are we going to? I think Tammy suggested to the, applicate, the application in that it was going to our town council. Right? Yeah, or the the. Oh, you mean to review the uh, they, review the job description? Like, whoever has to the review job the job description. description yeah, and she was going to do that. No, no, no. You, you were going to do that. Yeah. Didn't she send you the job description? Yeah. And we've we were, had that the original job description. I sent it you. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah. And that was supposed to go to the select board so they could send it to labor council. You want to do that to approve the um, job description? No, so I it thought can she be was going. I thought that was okay. I thought that she was going to be doing that because she was handling this. This part of the project, but if you want me to do it, I'll do yeah, because she had okay. said, um, she had sent it to you, and we looked at it, and then to send it on to be approved. Mm -hmm. And to well, it's the same one that was originally that that was on the original, yes, yeah, nothing changed, 
-hmm. right? It just it's just a matter of forwarding the email yeah. to whoever it needs to get to. Um, and then she said to go and post it even before we get the money because mm -hmm. who knows how long it would take to fill it. But Southwood Labor Council has to approve right. the job description before we can post it. Yeah. So maybe you can check with the select uh, board or uh, Carl to see if that should have been. Yeah, I, I would have thought that that would have been. Kind of they would have sped things along instead of later on after the application has been approved by the state. But okay, because if there's a problem, then then if they do something with that job application, the state would say, "Well, you know, this is what you applied it under. And now you, now you're changing it." That's mm -hmm. all. That's the reason I say that. But I'll I'll get it out. I'll get a I'll get a, a clean. Uh, well, I'm just email. not the application, just the job posting. You know. But that was in the application. Mm -hmm. That was part of the application. It's like the job description. Oh, was in the application. Oh. Yeah. I'll get it to Labor Council. Okay. So the only other thing I had um, is the discussion on draft and the finding food establishments. So uh, perhaps this would be a good time to, to stop to talk with Alex. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> good. Thank you for uh, your application. Thank you for uh, interview. <laughs> Um, we have a set of questions that we're supposed to ask, which have been approved. Um, Alex, do you happen to have a copy of your resume? I briefly looked at it. No, I that's didn't. Okay. That's okay. I'm so sorry. You can just no, leave it. I'll pull it. I, I think I have it in my... We, we here, did I have one hand on a photocopy. Um, I just yeah. don't have it. Yeah, I, okay. I think I have I, my copy in there. Okay. Yeah, it's a really great resume. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Think about just cutting it down. It's a little too much. Yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's good. Yeah. It's nice to meet you in you person. Space, if you space it tighter, you can maybe get it on one page. Right. Like get a bag and find glasses. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to meet you in person, sir. How yes. are you? Yes. Good, great. Thank you. Is that Peter over there? Yes, it is. Peter. Are we down? No, I just saw you on Zoom. Yeah, hi, Peter. Hi. I'm Pete's reporter from the. Hi, nice to meet you. And you, and you have a couple of, uh, it's not just, what is it, Westfield? Westfield, and you go with Mass Live too? Is it, do, um, is it more than one? So our publishing on Mass Live now, it's, it's, it's like its own section, but it's still the Westfield news. Okay. Yeah. So it's just our online. Alex, are you gotcha. in med school right now? Uh, no, it's the it's it's called uh, I'm, well yes, okay. but I'm not in school med school. Of medicine, I'm in the, the Tufts um, public health degree. Um, got it. Okay, you're not for pursuing. a master's in public health. Yeah. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. All incorporated is to one. So, yeah, understood. Yeah. So halfway done, Good and for you. so I should be done come December of this year. So lovely. Yeah. Insight. So are you commuting to Tufts, or is it Tufts? I am. Is it Tufts in Boston you're at yeah. going to? So right there in Chinatown, you know, Neilan yeah. Street. Yeah, I know where Tufts is, yeah. Yeah, Harrison Ave. So it's 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 not too bad. It's right now, it's just Monday and Tuesdays. Um taking four courses right now this semester. And uh, my Tuesdays just oh, just looks atrocious, but it's it's doable. And you live where Springfield or Westfield? I live in Springfield. Springfield. Okay. Right there in Forest Park. Mm -hmm. so, I used to commute to Boston from Southwick. Really? Really? Oh, my oh nursing my school, yeah. Wow, wow. My last year of nursing school. I How many days Route two or 91? No, um, five days a week. Five days a week. Oh, yeah, I had a friend whose house I would stay at. But, oh, man. Yeah, that it is, was, yep. That's a lot of travel. It was a lot. Of travel. Wow. wow. But you can really go there. Thank you, Jane. Mm -hmm. All right. So, did I miss anything? No, we were just small talking, um, okay. so it wasn't so uncomfortable. Yeah, Alex, Alex is um, <laughs> going to school, he's commuting Tufts to get his uh, master's in public health. Okay. Oh, yeah, I guess that is the best. Yeah. Well, that, that was a little important. <laughs> important. So, um, so, can you tell us something about why? What <laughs> made you focus on this type of, of, of education? Um. So I'm pursuing a master's in public health because um, I really enjoy looking at the uh, 
uh, well, my undergrad was biochem and uh, public health, and I actually thought about being a, a doctor and um, you know being a farm tech and uh, EMT. I you know anyway, um, but it might still be on the table. But um, I really fell in love with public health. You know, um, it, it's just something about it. It's just public health is everything, right? And um, just learning about you know, investing right now will have a really good rate of return down the road versus, you know, spending millions of dollars in the aftermath of a, something that could have been prevented. So I sort of see it in that way. Um, um, you know, the commute's not too bad, you know, if the roads are, you know, in good conditions and stuff like that, so. Yeah. Is there any one aspect of public health that you like more than others? Well, you know, that's a tough question. Um, I think I think I would consider myself a generalist because I think I like to dabble in a little bit of everything, um, including, you know, you get the, 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 the quantitative aspect of epi and biostats, but you also look at, you know, looking at the risk communication aspect, the health communications, uh, the community health education. I mean, it's just every, you know, population under you know, public health is just everything. Um, so I, I like a little bit of everything. Um, you got both the qualitative and the quantitative aspect. I think really go hand in hand and, but I'm very much a data um, kind of guy. I like that um, aspect. So. Are you hands-on a lot? Well, it I, depends. Um, I think my learning style, um, is is hands on, um, you know, experiential kind of learning, uh, but I don't mind reading a manual and you know, doing that kind of um, concrete learning style. So, so it depends you, on what the subject matter is. So when you were a um, you were a health agent in Deerfield, currently am yes. Are you currently are yes. Yes, see, it says present. So, does it say present? Yep. Online. Yes, it does. does. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So, <laughs> Title Five, meaning that you do what? Title Five. So, Title Five. I mean, I think we all know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's incorporation of you know septic. Um, so, I have a system inspector license at this time. I just got it recently. Um, so, you know, witnessing. You know, when it comes to Title Five inspections. Uh, so, looking at the septic and then. I'm trying to pursue the soil evaluator license at this time, but um, okay. um, company New Epic seems to um, have a backlog. Uh, for, um, yes, a number of years. Yes. A lot of yeah, a lot of people are waiting because of the pandemic. And that has to yeah. be in person, right? Yeah, because yes. field work. Yeah, yeah. And you've done field work for the Title Five inspections. Yes. Um, so uh, I was also part of the foothills, and that's where I really started learning about. Title five, and I was like, "Whoa, I'm falling in love with Title five. Um, because I'm just so used to like food <laughs> inspection. On that Absolutely, I've, I've never heard um, anybody say it. Anything else you can quote me as being misquoted. <laughs> um, but I, I really do like Title five. I mean, looking at the septic plans and the designs, and then understanding just whether or not the system is going to be a permanent system, and if it's going to last for a while, or if it's well, anyway. Um, so you can you can read the plans and figure out the calculations and all that. Yes, and there are times where you know you got to make a phone call, you know, to the RS or to the PE and say, "Hey, uh, I think we forgot a little something here," um, or adding another clean out spot when there's a term and stuff. So you don't have your RS, do you? No, I, I actually. So Western Mass um, Public Health Association um, that they have. The RS study guides, and so I took that out uh, in December, and I just um, uh, extended for a loan program for the study guide. So hopefully, you know, I'll I'll take that exam uh, fairly soon. But I still need the soil evaluator just to be um, well trained in understanding that a little bit further. Um, okay, so. Um you witness perk tests. Yes. How about any restaurant? Yes, a lot of restaurants. Um, I actually started 
uh, as a student employee at UMass doing, um, as a student employee uh, assisting the health inspector there um, with the dining, call, dining, com dining, dining commons and looking at um, the student run operations as well, looking at food waivers and um, taking the, the surf safe food protection manager there and understanding the science behind it and, you know, sure you have the, the codes and the regulations, but if you don't understand the spirit of the law, then you know, you know, sometimes um, you don't see that bigger picture and you try to work with people and try to have another major pillar of public health, which is education promotion and awareness in that aspect. So, yeah. How about housing inspections? I've done um, housing inspections. Um, they're not my favorite, um, but um, I, I do have some experience under my belt. Um, hopefully, you know, I won't have to go to housing court um, and try to, you know, find remediation that works. That have you ever had to do that? Uh, no, no, no. Um, Something that Tommy's done. Well, that's where they, they, they mean the court system wants you to get into remediation yeah. first before they go into the right. more serious, you know, the civil penalties. And right. Like that. Plus, they don't want to clog up the courts. Right. And, and the cost associated with that. Yes. You know, yes. So. Uh, have you considered maybe taking the mass fit or have you taken it? Yeah, yep. The MA fit. I oh, have, you've you know, taken that. Oh. With the B. Well, it was online. Yeah. And I yeah. contacted um, the housing guru who just recently retired and said, Paul. You know, yeah, and said, you know, is it possible we can do an in person? Sure. If I can retake it um, in that regard. So, but uh, yeah. How do you deal with people that aren't necessarily agreeing with your educated uh, opinions or? That happens quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to put that gently. But, uh, Very diplomatic. Um, you know, it's you know, I as you can see in my experience, I worked in retail, and so at the end of the day, you, you know, just about listening and um, being empathetic, and you know, not taking things personally, and understanding what's really going on here, and um, especially with during the COVID nineteen pandemic, and our response and our preparedness. I mean. You have some individuals who uh, have a certain stance and are very vehement um, with some protocols. Um, but I don't mind spending an hour on the phone and talking with someone. And then at the end of the day, you know, subconsciously subdued, you know, the individual starts wearing the mask because you understand, you know, you provide the science behind it um, and the empathy. So it really depends on your delivery and, and your approach in that regard. And, and every, I think every individual is unique in that regard, so, yeah. That's a good answer. Oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> well, this is a, a, a good old boy farming community. You know, it's, it's kind of moving into, you know, a younger generation, but there's a lot out there that have family histories for years, generations, literally. Nobody in this world, right? I think part of working in a rural community like this, uh, you tend to have to be a little bit more gentle with the, the public. Yes. So, you know, I mean, they're going to argue with you. Yes. up and down and left and right and they're going to tell you the same thing over mm -hmm. and over and over again until you see it their way yes and you're able to deal with you know without actually getting into an argumentative or right. uh, you know a non-win situation right and i usually try to not have you know use de-escalation tactics in that regard and i mean i in the foothills, you know, it incorporates four smaller towns, uh, Williamsburg, Whateley, Goshen, and West Hampton. Um, so I'm very familiar with that kind of environment and setting and also Deerfield, very rural as well. Um, so I, 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 I do tend to get along um, and 
try to be, you know, agreeable and affable in that regard and understand that, you know, public health, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, as the first way to approach, but, you know, just have that kind of uh, discussion, dialogue with people. And then, you know, if it doesn't really lead to um, finding that solution, uh, then, you know, we unfortunately have to take other measures and, you know, it's, it's, you know, you, you got the, the letters, the notice of letters, you got the letter of orders and stuff like that. So um, there are different avenues that we can uh, engage in in order to um, find a, a solution, uh, but also understanding where they, where individuals are coming from. Absolutely. Yeah. So our board, um, with three member board, um, elected for three terms, uh, three years, and then one of us is up every have a um, part time secretary dedicated to us, who's only five hours a week. But we do have a Which building new. Which is new. who's new, who's just started, new. and we're, we're hoping to get her up to ten hours a week. We have a building inspector secretary who will help out in a pinch. Um, so the health director is 24 7, basically. I mean, this is your department. You don't have anybody working under you, except eventually we are going for the nursing grant. I don't know, Tom, mm -hmm. you talked to Alex about the nursing no. grant. You want to just explain? We have a six town uh, grant with a shared services grant, DB oh, State. Yeah. So, uh, we're the, we're the host agency, so the money is going to be coming in here um, when it comes, but it should be it's imminent. Um, and it's going to be the Southwood Town grant book um, is going to have to share a full time nurse hmm. to be housed in our office in there, uh, down the hall. And then the, half, the other half time will be uh, Lanford, Russell, and Montgomery. And that, that's going to have to be administered. Uh, right now, we have. Previous director uh, Tammy Spencer has been working on that uh, administration function until I believe that the board wants to transfer over to my successor. Right? <laughs> Speaking of successor, how are you working independently? Very well, very independently. Um, yeah, I mean, just having the organizational and the structure aspect um, and, and writing notes and, you know, putting stuff in your phone for reminders and stuff like that. Just making sure that when you do say something that you actually do bring about the action. Uh, so, and, and if I need help, I usually ask for help. Not afraid to. And part of what you do affects us. Yes. So sharing information is critical. Yes. Because none of us want to have somebody from the public approach us and said, well, your health director did this and we're in a state of shock because we didn't know about it. So communication between yourself and the board is, is really critical. Yes. So you're able to make decisions, but also know that you really have other people that you have, you're responsible to essentially report to. Right, absolutely. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I think there are times where, um, you know, after we discuss with the board and, you know, we want to take a certain uh, course of action and again, delivering approach and, I don't think I've ever had a situation where um, it got to the point where something of that nature were, were to occur. But if it does, and I would immediately, from that situation, I would notify the chair or um, how it's structured, everyone, um, and, and just say, heads up, you know, uh, oops, or, no, no, uh, yeah, but oops. you get it. Yeah, I use so. you oops a lot. <laughs> oh, you do? Okay, <laughs> whoops, it is. No. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. so with all your education and all your experiences, a health, di a health director is what you yes. want to do? Yes, yes. So currently uh, in Deerfield, uh, I 
you know, in, in charge of, the, of a lot of duties and responsibilities, um, just like a, a health director. Uh, Is there how many people on that? So I, so when I got there, um, I was the only one. Um, and, you know, I told the board, you know, we really do need to create a department. And so, um, you know, we, you know, we also um, got the shared service grant um, uh, spearheaded by the Greenfield Board of Health with Jennifer Hoffman to do the contact tracing for uh, nursing services mm -hmm. as well. And so that's been working out tremendously well. Um, we did transition from another uh, PhE uh, grantee uh, agency as well. And that transition has been um, very smooth in that regard. Um, and the needs are being met. Um, but just doing contact tracing alone as a nursing service is not really enough for when it comes to the other duties and functions of the public health groups, outreach, coordination, um, you know, visiting homebound individuals and uh, doing wellness checks in that regard. Um, so, you know, I, I, you know, I'm working with the board and we have a salary budget item uh, to have a public health nurse and to have an assistant board of health agent as well. Uh, finance committee approved it. We're moving forward. So. so you have two agents. Uh, so yeah, Not board conference. of health agent and then assistant. assistant right. Right. That's nice. right. Health director or health inspector. And then is there like a board? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the, um, there's a board of health, uh, but Deerfield's interesting because it also uh, has a select board. So yeah, it has a select board. board, but but the board of health is the uh, the select board. No, 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 in Deerfield. Slip. Oh, no, oh, here in it's oh, usually oh, it's right. separate. Oh, right. Right. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Because this is the only board where you would report directly to us. Yes, Everybody right. else would report to the select board. Right, correct. Right, so right. this is the uh, independent right. from them. Right. And that's how it is um, with the other uh, health department jobs that I had as well. So, yeah. And it's on Mass General Laws. So board, that's correct. The board has exclusive authority over their, that's right. their people. Yeah. And they can fire, so, fire. how would this work? If, if you were offered a job, how would this? work with your school? So uh, how it currently works um, is that I would do a, a part-time basis. Uh, so the way that it is uh, Deerfield is that, you know, I said I'd be part-time so starting 20 hours and maybe it's to 32 hours. And then, um, you know, I imagine once I'm done with school, I would go to a full-time position. Our full time is about 37. 37.5. 37.5. So an additional 5.5. So, um, yeah. and, and it's worked out very well in that regard. So, um, you know, class, you know, two to five. So I, you know, leave around, you know, 12, get to class at two, you know, a little bit earlier. And then Tuesdays, um, I have three classes, three hours of course. And, um, so usually I have Tuesdays off, but I usually respond to emails and phone calls and whatnot. So, yeah. And then Wednesdays um, and Thursdays and Friday, I work. And then if there's a temporary food event that I usually go to on um, the weekends or you know, late on Friday or something like that, just to do um, a food inspection. That's how it is here when we have things going on on the weekend. You have to go do it. Yeah. Is that right? And then sometimes if something happens on a weekend, like a fire in a restaurant or something. Oh, yes. Yes, that's happening. Would be called. Would be called. Yeah. Um, so if you're offered the position, then when would you be able to start? I imagine some time, um, in a few weeks, I imagine, probably uh, late March, uh, but I don't know the definite. Right. Date on that, but I would certainly work with the board um, for that. You know, I provide uh, a date within a certain time of day. Gene, Alex said, No, I'm sorry. I apologize. Right. I that, didn't. That if he was offered the position, um, 
it would be like on a part-time basis until he graduated and then he could go to full time. Yes, I had a discussion about that um, with Carl. And it would obviously be under contract, okay? So um, it would be specific times, you know, specific hours. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, you know, you have to be here at 8.06 and you have to work to 104 and then <laughs> you can have lunch to 170. You know, wow. it's a block of time. And um, the contract would include a clause where once you completed your education, I believe December. Yes, that's my expected. Expected. Yeah. Um, and then it would be full time. Full time is 37 and a half hours. And the benefits would depend on your status too. You know, if you're going to look for health insurance and you're also going to be part of uh, Hamden County Retirement Plan and, you know, you're going to be vested in all the additional um, intricacies that come along with the employment. Mm -hmm. Five? No, so... Or, oh, you're raising so your hand. Alex, while he was working part-time, would not get any benefits until he went full-time? It would, no, it would 26, be, isn't it? 20, yeah, it would be a negotiation with the contract. Okay. So part time benefits included starts at 26 hours? I believe. No, so. well, the hours really are negotiable. Okay. Because we would actually still have to retain Tom for one day a week, let's say. Right. So let's say we're budgeted for 37 and a half. We're using Tom for eight hours. You know, you would be you know, X amount of hours. Right. So it would all be part of a contract as to what the salary would be for the hours mm -hmm. until the position became full time. Okay. And then when that happened, then it would be an extension of a full time contract okay. for the remainder of so you started say January, three years. Say you started January 1st or something. Right, right. But we would start a contract saying that you would work for three years, the first eight months under a part time, and then the other two in, two years in four months under a full time. So it wouldn't kind it wouldn't be like a one year renewable contract. It could be a multi year starting part time, and then transitioning over to full-time within the same doctor. Okay. okay. So while you're part-time, you said it has to be at least 26 hours. How many hours would you say you would work? So in Deerfield, um, it, you know, I said 20 hours would be the minimum as part-time with benefits. And then the range depends, you know, if there are meetings uh, and, and special events going on with, you know, new business uh, in town that require the, you know, you know, to his task, um, then it would go all the way to 32 hours. Um, so just having that kind of flexibility is, um, um, so is that something that we could do here? So is there a magic number? No. Okay. A, you know, a contract, it's a negotiation, essentially. Okay. It's not written in stone until both parties agree. Yeah. So we can have a suggestion you know, Alex wants ABC, the town of Southwick wants DEF. Okay. So A is going to be part of D, you know, right. you know what a contract is, right. okay? Right. So uh, it's not black and white until it's written in stone. Right. So I'm suggesting you make a proposal okay. with the hours that you're going to be available. Yep. A basic timeline. I mean, you base you have the education, so there's really not much more that you need. However, part of this could be an advancement in your education, like you said, the SAS. You don't have that, or the RS, or the right. RS, or yeah. Too. So uh, part of uh, 
the contract could be that you would be working towards the goal to complete or further your education. Right. So there's, you know, but I think part of what we need to do as a board is to get what you would like okay. in a neat little package. I want, you know, what your salary, what your hours, you know, et cetera, and on and on. And then you can do the our part of it and then come to a mutual agreement. All right. You know, like if you said, I have to work a minimum of 20 hours, I won't accept 18 hours. All right. Well, you know, okay. so let's get um, the detailed proposal from you. Now, what are you, what are you guys looking for in, for a, a health director during this time with Tom as a minimum hour? As a minimum, I want somebody who's going to stay. You want someone to I stay? Don't care so how we don't, long? So we don't have to go through this again. Oh, yes. Well, something happened. Yeah. Well. We, oh well, we had Tom. He retired, and then we had another health inspector who was with us. How long is Tammy? Less than two, two years. And then she. Oh. She left, took something closer to home, and ah, okay, yes. got it. Okay, so understood. Got okay. okay, so I mean, I'm hoping that you're looking for a career, you're looking for a home, yes, and a <laughs> home that you want to stay at for a while. Okay, yeah. that's what I'm hoping for. So, I personally would include a multi year contract, okay, okay. So can you do that for us? Give sure. us what you want, your hours. Sure. I mean, right you now want. I'll, you know, I'm I'm thinking maybe 25 hours minimum a week. And then put a range or or just leave it. Well, you know what the salary sell. range is. Okay. Right? Um it was in the application. 60 to 70. 60 to 70. Okay. <coughs> so we would um so then I would have to figure that out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But part of that salary range is also going to include basically your retirement and, you know, et cetera, and on and on. Well, so I, once you give, I'm sorry, Tom. Can I just add that to that salary? That That's the town salary when I mentioned the administrative uh, portion, which is coming from a grant. Mm -hmm. That part of that would would fall into mm -hmm. into your salary but it wouldn't be wouldn't be with the town that's grant grant money right. but then you, there's administrative function that right. the same right. person right. Right. Yeah. if there's anything left yeah <laughs> well she already gives hours um and that would include the company car um or i and or mileage reimbursement okay. you and know some, depending on whether you wanted a, a, a vehicle or, in order of some other benefits health um, and then the and working with us that's the best benefit. <laughs> that's true you make yeah, a yeah. compelling yeah. argument yeah. <laughs> I, I think 20 i think 26 hours is the minimum i think for uh for benefits, for benefits. For benefits. For benefits. For, yeah going from see part. i, I don't okay. know the specifics and I don't have to get it. when you're part-time um you have to pay more for health care than if you're full-time it's uh, the other benefits are prorated but i don't think health care is I yeah, I think that's a standard. Yes, yeah. they, uh, but the other benefits like vacation and uh, right holidays are probably and so twenty six hours. If we're at a board of health meeting for two, that would count as part of your twenty six. It wouldn't be in addition to. They don't call it comp time, right. but it's essentially that type of of scenario where okay. you know. The hours that you spent here are deducted from the hours you do spend there. Right. And we meet Thursdays, uh, first and third. First and third. Unless at six o'clock or seven o'clock. Okay. Yeah. And we may have, if, well, like when COVID first hit, yeah, we were meeting every single week. And that was Zoom. Cool. So, Right now, our meetings are obviously hybrid. Um, though this is a cool thing. 
the owl follows you. Yeah. It's like, it I'm like, wow. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Who's talking? <laughs> okay. and then you um, so the hybrid is basically in effect until July 1st, yeah. but it may be extended. Yeah, they keep extending it. Right. I don't think they're going to make a decision on something permanent. Maybe they are. But... Right, but this may be permanent now. Because you know it's it tended to work right. well enough to allow more of the public right. to attend yes. um, meetings versus having to physically be there. Right. So it, it educates the public a lot yeah. easier yeah. and lowers transmission. Yeah, right. Potentially, and um, you know yeah. I could be home right now in my pajamas, right. <laughs> but because you're Some here, slippers. I'm here. All okay? right, <laughs> but other people can you know. Yeah. Right. Tune in to it and uh, not have to, you know, leave. And sometimes you know, if they have an issue with driving at night or something right. like that, so it does it does open it up for people to have a hybrid meeting. Right. So, do you have any other questions for us? Um, is there, um, uh, I guess, what are your um, expectations when it comes to, I mean, communication and, and all, um, but the kind of a, approach with certain businesses or septics or uh you know is there anything you that that's a learn as for? you go okay besides you need to be above and beyond the code yes <laughs> yes yes I mean, no, no one's ever asked me that before i have to think about that i think they they're pretty they have been as far as i'm concerned they've been respectful of what we do we're out in the field if we, if we have a problem we take it to them uh, and they, they respect our, our abilities. And if there are issues, then we'll, we'll hash it out of the meeting. Mm -hmm. But we're dependent. Mm -hmm. on, we're dependent on you. Oh. You know, we can share, yeah. but you're the one mm -hmm. boots on the ground. Yeah. And one so. thing we don't want to know is what's going on with the Board of Health through somebody else and right. we don't know about it. That's what I already said yeah. earlier, yeah. that I don't want somebody coming up to me and saying, hey, your health agent told me I could. Yeah. Yeah. So From now on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. And it's, and it's fine in a certain situation where a decision has to be made at the spur of the moment. Right. Uh, yeah. We can't look like idiots. No, no. It, my job, I mean, the way that I approach my job is how does it protect the town? How does it protect and, and provide a, a positive appearance um, in, in the decisions that we make? So, or you know, ultimately, you know, the delivery of what we have to implement. So, yeah. Okay, so I don't can't give you any exacts on a contract right now. You have to give me some details. Sure. And then I'll go talk to Carl and find out how to structure the contract. Should I email that to you or uh, email, it email to Tom? Tom? Okay. He'll, he'll send it to me. Okay. You have Tom's email. I do, yes. yes. Yeah. So just, you know, give me a little synopsis sure. of what you would like in the contract. Sure. And then I'll present that to to the head guy and see how we can. Is his name Carl? Yes. Carl yes. Yeah. Yeah. administrative officer. Right. Ooh. But it, I think it needs to be like a one on one sitting in front of his face and saying, you know, what can we do here, there, and, and kind of finalize something. Sure. Okay. I'm very confident that you would do good in this position. Well, thank you. I won't fail you guys. So. No. no, we have pitchforks in this now. Okay? Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you have any other questions? Um, no. I feel like all my inquiries have been answered and addressed, and um, I feel good. I feel confident. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the reassurance. Thank you. So, yeah. Whatever you guys need, okay? That's how I work. Just keep up that app. We need a help. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So yeah, okay. I'll I'll send that information along to Tom, and um, we'll be uh, in talks. Well, hopefully by our next meeting, we'll make a decision, and uh, 
at that point, I hope to have something in front of me that I could present to you. Sure. And then, you know, we yeah. do a negotiation, but we should at the next meeting make a decision on whether we're hiring you or not. And then a decision on the contract would follow. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Terrific. That's great. great. Wonderful. I would shake your hand virtually. Traveling from Springfield to here, obviously not if you can go to Boston. You know, it's funny. Um, this is my first time coming to Southwick, but I did hear about a donut place. I think it was called Mrs. 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 Murphy's. Murphy's. Yes. And um, yeah. my grandmother loves that place. So. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Your grandmother, where is she? Uh, she she's uh, in Springfield as well. So oh, but she's, it's only open Wednesday through Sunday, and it's a drive-up little hut. Yeah, oh. but they still have the yeah, same donuts. donuts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the commute wasn't that bad at all. Um, um, yeah, it was interesting. What part of Springfield? Oh, Forest Park? I see. I yeah. Too bad. Yeah. Yeah. see, this is none of our business. Oh. Yeah, yeah not, we don't ask personal questions oh. and stuff. Oh, no, no, this is a friendly, like, hey, I think they'll want to move to Southwood eventually because it's such a nice town. Yeah, it has the, um, has the housing. Um, oh, expensive. You got five hundred grand. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. depends on what, what salary range is. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, we come back a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. three three subdivisions going in right now. Right now, active subdivision houses going up. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. you yeah. just have a nice three little condo for a small town. Shape. Yeah, we got, yeah. Yeah, we're a hot town. Have you guys town. started doing anything with short uh, term rentals or anything? Oh, like that? Yeah. actually, it's Thursday uh, next Tuesday. Another subcommittee for oh. short term rentals. Yeah. Yeah. We're examining that right now. Because yeah. I know that's a new hot topic um, discussion point. Yeah. Um, so it certainly is. Well, if we give you a contract, it wouldn't be a short term rental. Okay. Oh, thank you. So, a permanent structure, like a septic tank. Great. Yeah. I love it. That's great. Well, we can start with the septic tank and go from there. Okay? Great. Wonderful. Thank you. So, have Mr. a good Tanisha, one. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. Be well. You know how to get out of here? Where are you going? Yeah, so I actually took the elevator. Oh, yeah. You don't have oh, to. You just go the down stairs. the stairs. And you're just parked in the, the side or the out. back or the. Um, it's where it said, like, senior center. Yeah, the senior, we're, we're yeah, right about you. Just take the yeah. stairs all the way down. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. It was nice you. meeting you. Bye bye. Okay. You yeah, want to, um, restaurants. <laughs> I want to do the restaurants. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Okay. So, I, I, you ready, Susan? Yeah, so, this? I was looking at the starting to construct the light at the restaurants. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more I looked at the um, regulations, um, the more questions I had um, mm -hmm. about uh, how we were going to find them. And I guess you probably you could recall what happened last year and the year before um, yeah, for finding um, you know the regulations that were promulgated by the Board of Health in January 2019. Um, they weren't tested um, in court, but challenged. Um, but beyond that, there's a couple of points I wanted to just bring up from the Section two penalty and fines and offer a couple suggestions. <clears throat> One is the uh, uh, section two A number two. If payments are not made by the fourth week of February first, whichever comes first, then the Board of Health may issue a fifty dollar per day additional fine. So <clears throat> that is um, something that I think the board needs to think about because it it's. Not clear if that means that you will or that you might. Um, so that language. Um, I think it has to do maybe an individual basis, mm -hmm. depending upon what the reason is for them not paying. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, then that's going to open up for having hearings on almost if people are going to, then that's going to, I They're think. They're going to say, why? Why me? Why did you choose me to find Okay, 
or yeah. or or them if they got so, it. So that's the, that's the only thing I can see. A, okay, and that's for people who have not paid. Correct. But what about people who have not submitted? Submitted because that seems like what that. Well, thing that's is. a that's a, another issue that I wanted to bring up is that that's the the fees. <clears throat> The finding is only for people that haven't paid. All the others are not addressed in this regulation. Mm -hmm. So that was the second issue I had with, right. with this. Okay, so not to say they can't be remedied. Um, uh, and the third, the third one, and probably perhaps the most important, is Section Three, non-criminal disposition. <clears throat> Whoever violates any provision of these regulations, um, the violation of which should be subject to specific penalty, may be penalized by non-criminal method of uh, disposition as provided by MGL chapter 40, section 21D, which is typical. That's like a parking ticket. Mm -hmm. That's very mm -hmm. common. However, you have the <clears throat> word may in there as well. Mm -hmm. Non-criminal disposition has only a $300 fine maximum. And there's other things that would have to go along with it. So um, the decision would have to be made to A, whether you want to use a non-criminal disposition method or not, because it, right now it looks like it could be either way. So my suggestion is, and it's only a suggestion, is that we speak to town council and find out, given what that is right now in place as a regulation, <clears throat> what we can do with that going forward, and then also uh, talk about maybe changing the regulation to clean up some of the... Uh, well, do you want to do that now okay. before we no. submit it? We need to do something now with these people. We, I'm not saying we want, but I mean, the, the now is, I, I don't disagree with you, but I'm just saying that that the now, with the way this is written, is, I think... I, I, questionable, uh, inconsistent. Um, so, for example, Take a restaurant that, that establishment that hasn't paid. How much you're going? How much are you going to find them? And if you find them too much, they're probably for the okay. Probably. So the letter is. So hold on a minute. When I'm looking at this, it looks as if only one person hasn't paid. One no, no, that's the, that's but that's the that's the information. Look down the second column in the back. Establishments that have not yeah, submitted down, applications. Yeah, that's down, look down, down the second half of that too. Down. In the back, the second half, and then in the back. Permits listed are what they paid for last year. The establishments have not been contacted. No, see, this is confusing to me. Have they? No, no, no. You're reading the same thing that we are. Establishments that not have submitted applications. Start, see, that's right. so that means they haven't paid. Then those people haven't sent in anything. Okay. So the other ones are people that the top yeah. one is. Either right. money or their certificates. Right. Correct. So the top ones I'm not as concerned with as the bottom ones. I agree with you. I am too. I just Patisseria, what is with them every year? Every year. So they would follow under May, you know, because you're you're it's you're every uh, year. You're a re repetitive violator. And Dunkin' Donuts, come on. Yeah, no kidding. So these let these people I think need a letter like I, I don't disagree no. with that. I just want to I want to do it and do it that's defensible and, and okay. And that's okay, why so I, do we have to go through town council to ask what our what our next step is? Well that's that's I, the only reason I say it is because of the, the issue we're coming we're coming to right right now. Um, if it wasn't so late, I would you know. I mean, can we say to Tom, can we ask town council? Can we just go and, and these I've restaurants gotten, would I've be, gotten permission be to closed? I've got permission to, to, right. to do but that. But by the time you get to town council, by the time town council get back to you, by the time you issue it, you may as well just wait and issue them their food permit in 2023. Well, what's the alternative now? You. is sending them a letter saying here's the regulations and here's what they state you have until you have 48 hours you have 48 hours you from receipt of this letter 
from receipt of this letter to contact the Board of Health. What, well, what were you thinking, Tom? I was thinking of the amount. I'm not thinking of the amount yet because you're sending them this look. This is like a second reminder letter. No, okay. she said she had permits. Uh, these establishments have not been contacted. Right. They, they, she sent out their original um, applications in November. They have not responded and it's March. So sending out a second notification saying, look, you were already issued your a renewal application in November. The regulations state, and then quote the regulations. I'm not saying we are fining you. I'm saying these are the regulations you have until to get your permit in. So, okay. So if they get it in by that time, then there's no fine. Confused. No, I think they need to have a fine. Can I, I have a question? On the back, Chris Mill Cafe Food Establishment submitted application with payment and serve safe, but they're just missing the choke and the allergen. Mm -hmm. So, so that should have. So they did yeah. pay. Yeah. And so the Chris the Mill should have been, and kettle bread should have been on the first. Well, it says submitted application with payment and certifications on 12 11 22. So that means right. kettle bread's all set. Yeah. So I think this 12, is. 12 11 21. Yeah. No, 2 11 22. 12 11 22? 2, 2 11, 11 22. Oh. So, so they like were still. So it looks like kettle bread's okay. Right. Wait a minute. No, that's what's confusing me. I thought this was starting from January 1st. I thought these were supposed to be right, by right. January but they did, 1st. But they did, but she did finally. So I'm if just they saying, did it, they did are we going pay. to find them? See, already you're, it's not what the regulations are saying. Well, by January saying, 1st. It was saying by February you, 1st. You understand? What I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get, I'm trying yes, to nail yeah. this down. I know what you're trying to do. I'm trying to nail it down. You're trying to take in the entire bucket of everybody that hasn't done this, that, and the other thing. And I'm concentrating just on this little bucket that have nothing, that have given us nothing. Those are the people that I want a violation letter or a notice, a second notice letter, if that's what you want to call it. And get your stuff in now. So let's get take kettle bread off. You know what I mean? Do I have to buy you roses then? <laughs> what color? <sighs> so, how do we handle all the filers? I could draft up a letter. I mean, that's, I was it's working on drafting up a letter when I ran into this problem with the. With I, the, the I mean, think when we. I was drafting up. I think when we drafted these letters, these rec, these here. I don't think we were talking about certifications missing. No. I think we were talking about non-payment. Yes. yes. So I agree. So they have to be revamped. I agree. But again, as we go as you go back, they have to be revamped. But to Jean's point, she doesn't want to wait for that. She wants to do something now. No, right? no, honestly, if you want to wait and then revamp the regulations and then send them to town council, and that's fine. I have no problem with that. And then you can figure out how much the fine is. So we could do that. We could do that now without doing any of that, right? Figure out the fine. You can do what now? What are you going to do right now? We can figure out the fine. Even if we did nothing in that, we went along with getting getting the letter out tomorrow. Okay. Theoretically. Okay. Is there going to be a fine attached to it? And what is that? What's the fine? See, to, to me, it would be if you, if you do not submit XX by XX, your fine or the fines will be incurred or but, whatever. But exactly. wait a minute. Most of these are certificates and you don't have anything in here that addresses certificates. No, that, that we're, but we're just talking about the people that we're have just talking about the people the, that submitted nothing. See, see, the problem I have is that the re your regulation says payment of a food establishment permit must be received before January 1st okay. of the next calendar year. So you're going against what you what your thing is. That's why it's not been made by the fourth week 
or by February 1st. Okay. Right. Okay, so, so then all right, they're gonna either have to go pay. by the regulation or so let's go by the stone. regulation then for these for those few that one, two, three, four, five. Dunkin' Donuts have two locations, so you gotta count them twice. Okay. So, so you so have to check on uh Saunders tobacco to see and retail food to see if, if they really need it. Yeah, did they, they, did they yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. do they sell perishables? Do you know Saunders? Perishable food. I think they had milk, but that's got to be yeah, that's a minor. If they know they had cooler with, with soda okay. and stuff, but they, I mean they don't have. But that's soda's food. not yeah. perishable. Yeah, yeah. it's more so, than tobacco. I think on that one. So, so definitely patisseria. Patisseria, both Dunkin' yeah. Donuts, Sunflower Smoothie Cafe. So, I don't even. Yeah, they she just, said they sound like they just opened. Yeah, so they might not even know about. Kangaman Pizza. So definitely um, patisseria, Dunkin' Donuts. Then you have to research Subway to find out. Subway's closed. Oh, that is closed. I did, okay. I did check it. I believe Subway. Edgewood. And I'm pretty sure Franklin House is still closed. Yeah, so yeah. Franklin House is out. So we're talking about. Subway's out right now. So Subway's closed, huh? Subway's yeah. closed, yeah. But sign. I, look, I actually went up to it just to, to check it Edgewood's out. Edgewood's not even open yet. So we're talking about five. Is Edgewood going to be open? I don't know. I don't know. And they're gonna have liquor like do they have liquor there? The booth? Beer and wine or something? Yeah. They do, don't they? I don't know. I've never been there. Yeah. No, well they did when I was when I was inspecting they did have they did? liquor. Yeah. I, mean, so they they must have, still, I think they had a bar. Yeah, they they had a bar there. Well, you know, you'll have to see if they are open, if they've so, been issued a liquor license. So, so okay, so there's five. Um, Okay, patisserie may not be it. So patisserie of Duncan. Two Duncans. Right, Kagamon and Gristmill. Well, Edgewood. You got to find out about well, Edgewood. Edgewood, I don't think it's even open right now. I'll look into Edgewood. Well, yeah, they, I don't right. think they would have been open normally any any event right now. Okay. So it's not as bad as it looks. No. But. You know, the patisseria, every year you go through the same thing, they don't. Well, I have thought about that and I have, I think I, think I have an answer to this and working with the other two uh, departments that deal with this, treasury collector, uh, the building department, fire department, or the select board. Next year, um, they could require that the, we just have to coordinate better with the, right. the, the, the town than has been in the past. And one of the ways to do that was they mentioned it going on to e permitting, but that isn't the only way. As long as, it, like uh, Michelle and Treasurer Collector's Office and Select Board, we all know for the four major uh, permitting authorities <clears throat> all working together, they will they would not get a liquor license. And they would they would not get inspections for the building and the fire departments until everybody's satisfied. Right. Including but us. Patisserie and Dunkin' Donuts don't have liquor. True. And kind of on pizza. True. No, but they still get they still get inspected. They still get inspected. Right. They have yeah. Yeah. By, so by those. Yes. So that yes. that's to me, that's the Achilles heel yeah, for making sure everybody, but it still would be a coordinated effort. Right. So that's next year. So what are you going to do for? Well, this year, Tom's going to send out letters and um, slap on the fines. But fine. Go back, go back to that. Back to that. Come out. Do we know what? Um, so so they haven't. So they have not been contacted at all. Well, how many times? How many times should we be contacting somebody well, that she, should be? She said these haven't been know. contacted. Our permits listed. Are the, the so permits. she contacted the people that were missing stuff, right? But so she didn't contact, contact the people the one that, that were. Oh, so okay. I think the ones Can that hold right, right now. now so the, we're going to send them a letter the and say if they don't pay within forty-eight hours, and then they are going to get fined. Like the first full week. So we're going to send them. It means three full weeks in January. We're gonna send. We're gonna the send about. Um, um, so, certified mail. Certified mail. Yeah. Okay. Is 
if they don't pay within 48 so hours, so then, they're go they may, then they are going to be fined so an additional $50, $50 per day okay. on February 1st. Okay, and the so people that didn't, and the people okay. that paid after so January 1st, but still didn't make January 1st, we'll they would find it in January 1st. They paid. So now, how many days? It's 28. Because we're giving them the opportunity to pay now and not be fine. So it's 31 days. We're giving them the opportunity that they can pay now and not be fine. Now we're going they're, by they're, day These now. people aren't going to get March 3rd. Nobody's going to get fined unless 31. these people don't respond within 48 hours. Times $50. $50 times 31. So just, you're I'm back. doing the fines now. Okay. Well, she just. Okay, what Sue, if, no, listen, Sue's saying something right, that's entirely right. different than what can you I, said. Can I say something? Yeah. Sue has a different perspective on it. My perspective is that, Tom, we send a letter out and say, pay within 48 hours or you will be fined. And this is what you'll be fined. Which is what I just figured okay. out. So it's $150 for the first three weeks, $50 per week for the first three weeks, $50 per day. And that's as of February 1st to today is $1,550. So they're looking at a fine of $1,700. Hmm, that right. seems that's a little fine. steep. Right. This but is a they, food but, but permit. Wait a minute. But if they pay within 48 hours or 72 hours, then, then they, they have don't have fine. to pay the fine. That's fine. There's and no just, fine. And the people that have paid already, right. they're not going to go back and fine. Right. Them. But this would cover the May. This $1,700 would cover the May fine you. That's how much your fine would be as of March 3rd. All right, what do you think? What, what's your um, thoughts, Tom? Well, that's not what your regulations say. How it's much like, is the license to begin with? Can I just 100 ask? bucks. Depends on 125. Yeah. 125. So we're going we're gonna to find them 10 times what well, they're Well, they are operating a they are operating establishment without, without permits. I mean, you can get out there and drive a car without a yeah. license. Yeah, Why? <laughs> You're I required mean, to get a license to drive a car. These people are required to get a license. Their to business a is to serve food. They don't have a license to do it. Um, you don't think they should be fine? You just let oh, them I think go? they should be fine, but not $1,800. How much? What are you going to say? Well, you can pay $5. But our regulations say. Yeah. That's right. That's what the regulations say. But aren't, but aren't you but aren't you saying and aren't you saying that if they if they do the 48 hour and they come in and pay their yes, permit, we're giving them yes, they're we're waiving that because we use that word may, may fine right. you. We may yeah. fine you. Well. So that covers it doesn't well, say it we also, will. Right. But it also, yeah, so it also says that if they pay within 48 hours, they're not going to be. I, right. just, I just want these people to get their permits. I want them to get their permits. It would be nice. Yes. So, Tom, what are your thoughts? I think I've already expressed them several times. So, so you it want goes to get your regulations. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. It goes you want to change your regulations. So you want to wait. Be, you want to so wait. you're thinking those that's people fine. that paid late, like this person that paid February 11th, um, counteract it and, and fine them for being late. Well, then, 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 you know, then I think you should. Then we have to change the regulations. With, yeah, yeah, make the regulations that if, you know if you don't pay, if you don't get your license after January 1st. You, Okay, so happens, so we'll so probably... two months from now, when these regulations get revised, then are you going to send out a letter saying, "Hey, by the way, well, it's six months if, into the year. Do you want to get If you ask me to now? do this, I will do it. It's not illegal not or anything. I'm just saying that's I'm my opinion, asking. and I just and the, the reason I stopped it was because of these issues. And non-criminal disposition is an option, and um, that's why I was thought that. That we could contact the town. You know, so, town do you want you want to handle it by non-criminal disposition as opposed to 
Well, you have that in the regulation, well, but it, <laughs> non-criminal disposition is a $300 max. And I think the town has it because we have parking, we have parking. Well, no, we, we used to get enough for the, yeah, well, I, I have, I have Apple. books for the non-criminal <laughs> so, Right, yeah, so that's, yeah. the town has to accept that. They, they so do you have. think the, the letter should say um, they, to pay within 48 or 72 hours or it'll be a non-criminal disposition, what do you want to call it? Be penalized by the non-criminal disposition method with a $300 fine? Is that how you think we should handle that? The no, I don't. So how do you think we should I handle think, it? I think there should be a $300 fine if there anybody has to handle them by January 1st. Okay, Period. based on that non-criminal disposition. Based on non-criminal disposition, if that was, if you wanted to go with that, but that it's also in the, it's also in the regulations that say, you may use that, so you could also do do it the other way. So, so you there's an option in your regulations. Whoever violates provision of this regulation, is subject yeah, which is subject to a specific penalty, comma, may be penalized by not criminal provision. So, so we could so look at it too. So, options either way. So we could look at it that way. What do you think? Instead of saying. You owe a thousand dollars in fines to go with a non-criminal disposition. Which of course they could have, they could appeal to any of them. Right. They could have, any of them they can come in front of the board and, and ask for right. It's always an appeal process. Mm -hmm. But if you want and then in the if, meantime, we can revamp the regs. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I, I definitely agree with you that we should do it earlier. Uh, get, get letters out earlier. However, you guys, and the I mean, you, can you're, address, you're deciding. The, the regs can address this, this oh, certificates. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. But, it, it, you know, we should get this out quicker. Then. Yeah. Why, how come, after, why, why not after February 1st was this addressed? Did we just not get to it or like? Mm, basically, we didn't have a secretary. Yeah, there was a lot of, oh, we just okay. didn't, we weren't getting, you know, there was. Yeah, we didn't have the data. Yeah. Okay. Oh, got it. Your, your option about the, if you want, the, even the 48 hours, you know, and if they, they don't do it for 48 hours, then find them the maximum. Otherwise, they get no fine. Is that, is that, I mean, yeah, that's you're, me. the, come you're come. the boss. You tell yes. me what you want me to do. To, to pay with import this month, that we can make up, we can yeah, discuss it. We can make a motion. Make a motion. Yeah. Did, so wait, did we ever send? We sent first notices to who? Everybody on this list? Everybody. Absolutely. No, okay. no. The back one, she said. When you say notices, no, no, she, she sent, sent it out in November. Oh, she sent right. stuff out in November. Right. She hasn't oh. contacted these people, right? Right. She contacted the people that didn't submit their certifications and stuff like that. That didn't complete submit the application that we're missing Look, things no for edgewood what did they what, what what happened last year and the year before you guys were people calling? paid no yeah i think you no, no you we, we waived it didn't we for the no, last year we waived no, or something no. we shots? never waived. We talked no. about it but we yeah. didn't do it so you find people we yes. i don't know yes we did i think i don't remember i do because with the covid no restaurants were open I remember finding. So you think people. is it? You think that's a reason? Now, just asking a question. Do you think that's a reason why, since they, since of COVID, they forgot that they had a had their license in by January first? Well, they got a notice. Yeah, I know they did. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm trying to find. He's playing a, devil's advocate. Yeah, I'm trying, trying to find yeah, a, no, an know. avenue well, for this. I, yeah. Okay. I own a restaurant. I don't need to be permitted. Yeah. I don't have any problem with that because the board of health is not going to do anything. Yeah. You know, somebody comes to my restaurants and gets sick. Well, too bad. I don't have a license anyway, so you have no jurisdiction over me. Right, and, how, and then uh, how can the board of health give yeah. you a license and you're operating? How can you permit? Yeah, don't worry about it. You know, I don't have to. I don't. Have okay, so look to at. It. So what do you think about that? 48 hours, or they get penalized through non-criminal disposition with a fine of 300. 
You got to do something. Yes. Okay. I agree something. with that more than eighteen hundred dollars. And three hundred dollars is a and then, okay. So the non-criminal disposition. If they don't pay that, what happens? You contact town council to see what the next step is. No, yeah. you can send a sheriff. No, no, you oh, have to go to town council. You, know, you got to you have to go to court. Okay. Which all right? They're not talking. Not not going to go that far. Okay, so Tom, it's going to be patisseria with two Dunkin' Donuts, Kangamon pizza. I'll I'll have a draft. Uh, I'll send it to you. It's so. not going to be Gristmill. There there is a certificate. Yeah. 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 And Edgewood, maybe no one's even picking up the mail. Yeah, we don't even know if anybody's there. Yeah. But somebody has to have picked up the mail since November. So just see if. And then Saunders. Franklin House is closed. Yeah. So. Sunflower so, smoothie so probably doesn't even Subway's know if they just opened I'm going to check. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check on Sunflower. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get on that. Yeah, and check on that. Um, check on Edgewood. I'll check on that Saunders and Sunflower and yeah. okay. Edgewood. Check on those three. But definitely issue the letter to Congerman Pizza. Are they still in business? Partissieri yes, and the two Dunkin' Donuts. Do. Definitely those. Let's get it. Okay. All right. So that takes care of those. Now, how do you want to address the certificates that were left missing? Um, when Tom goes to do inspections, he asks for them, or how do you want to handle that? That would be nice, Tom. If you walked into these places like Roma's and say, "Where's your board of health permit?" and see what they say. Well, no, it sounds as if they must have got a permit, but it's their certi certifications. She wouldn't issue the permit unless they all the certifications were received. Oh. So she's waiting to issue permit permits mm -hmm. on all of these permits. people right. because they haven't completed right. all of their right. paperwork. Okay, Westfield Brewing, too, would need a letter also because it looks like they owe $50. What um fifty dollars for which permit would that be? I don't know. Or they could have short paid the license. You know what I mean? Jessica knows. Yeah, Jessica knows mm -hmm. all this stuff. But is she still coming in? Oh, she's yeah, coming she's in coming in tomorrow. Coming in tomorrow. What? Yeah. That's good. So you know, pay a visit to Brass Rail and say hey. Where's your this food crowded, permit? This crowded Sunday down there. Ask them where their food permit is. Well, we know where it is. Yeah, it's on Jessica's desk. You know? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I really don't. Yeah, so how do you want to? Um, Tom is going to create the letter. For those, yeah, I, but we need to address the ones that we don't have certificates. You mean before we change the regulations, before you guys change the regulations? Yeah, and, and the certificates aren't in the regulations. Mm -hmm. So can you just draft up a letter saying your thing needs to be paid for and all of your certificates need to be in order to get fined? Just yeah, I like that. Certificates in I like that. Payment. So you that, send a letter to put those all together. Of these let them people. let them argue that. Let them argue that. I like that. In other words, the same letter we just add that we just add that certificate. We just change that. Well, if the bottom list hasn't submitted anything, they they need their certificates too. So just yeah. blankly write the letter saying your payment and your certificates need to be totally. But you can't yeah. say that your payments. Yeah. You have to say your certificates for the brass reel. The brass reel paid. Right. So okay. you are fine. So, so you are, you yeah. the penalty is only to, for people that hasn't paid, that haven't paid. Well, we don't know which which certificates who has. Who hasn't submitted what certificate? Well, Jessica does. She says all certificates, all certificates. Personal yeah, I mean, property tax and food safety manager. What's food safety manager? So you manager? draft That's a letter saying certificates. certificates. You print 10 of them. Um, Southwood Inn, all certificates. Sunny's, 
tobacco, so um, mean, blossoming acres, all sorts. Okay, of so like Salt Marsh has Olds taxes and Millie's, so that means we don't submit, we don't give, we them, don't give them anything unless their taxes are paid. Yeah, but they're operating. But, right. Yeah. I mean, what? But they're they don't need a permit to operate Salt Marsh. Right. Nobody. I mean, does. that's the, I guess that's where I'm going with this. Yeah. There's no repercussions then. Right. Well, that should that shouldn't be. How do you change that? You find them. Okay. You have a solid policy in place that allows you to find them right. without any rebuttal, because when you use words that are soft like yes. "may," which is there's a lot of room for rebuttal. Which so is, that's it, which okay. is the reason why to, I wanted to go yeah. to the so, lawyer. But. Wait, but wait a minute. These plan these regulations were reviewed by town council. Closely enough, so we actually we never really had a prop. We never really, even then, we only had a few people, like one or two. This so you like, changed a lot this more. word from May to shall, shall, and then you are fining them the seventeen hundred dollars. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Right. right. It's too late now because those are regulations in place to do that. And right. Great if you want to. So that. if you right. make hard look hard language with hard limits, right. yes. Then you get, yes. But you just said you don't want to see them. Fine, seventeen. I mean, dollars. no, you, I don't. You but just contradicted yourself. That's so. my personal opinion. But if it's policy and procedure and rules, then everybody has to follow the rules. You I know like what that. I mean? Like, yeah, I, I, like I that. think that's steep. But it, it, yeah, but but it does say though shall in the first part within a seven day period beginning January first of calendar year. Okay. The permit holder, his her agent, not in compliance with the provisions of these regulations, shall shall receive a fine of fifty dollars per week. Okay, so that's 150, that's right. guaranteed. Right. So we can do the 150 50. because it says shall and the 300 for non-criminal disposition. So you that's a minimum of $450 right there. Okay, so then the $50 like per day is a May. Yes. So you don't have yeah. to do that. Okay. Okay, do that. How's Does that, that work? Hey, <laughs> now here's a guy that knows about permits. For we're no, talking about uh, uh, <laughs> we're just talking about the people that haven't paid and still, what we're doing. Oh, mm -hmm. we're still arguing, discussing, not arguing. We're discussing okay, our so regulations. It's gonna be one fifty plus three plus three hundred. Mm -hmm. If they don't pay within forty eight hours. No, no, even no, even if they do pay, that's included For the certificates. in that's included in, yeah. That's a minimum of of the fine. Okay. So it's so then all these people get a sent letters. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do you need help, Tom? Yes. Yeah, I think he already he already showed up earlier, and then Joe's here, so I got a lot of help. <laughs> no, Alex showed up. Um, we had an interview. They had an interview today. Yeah, yeah Alex, uh, him. very good. He's very he's, he's personable. He's intelligent. He's well spoken. Did you hire him? Nothing yeah. like. He's, no, he's nothing like me, Joe. That's the point yeah, that she's trying to make. Just, I want to talk with Carl about how we can uh, negotiate a contract, and I want to get details um, before we can offer him. I have to know what our, it's under our purview to offer him. Yeah. Whatever you need, we're here for you. Thank you. Absolutely appreciate it. Okay, so. Uh, Letters. So, Tom, do you need help? Do you need help? I would, I'll get to have, have a draft. I'll have it. I mean, I've already been work, messing around with it when I came up with these issues. Yeah. Um, but I'm okay with that. The, the worst they can do is, is challenge it, and uh, we'll right. see. But, and I was, well, Joe was here the last time. Fine. But um, at least they'll be aware. They have a lot of authority. They'll um, be aware of it. And I think it's entirely reasonable that, that people should get fined. For not having a food establishment application in by March third. <laughs> I mean, by the whole thing. Okay. well, we're just talking. Yeah, it's just the fact that we can't get that accomplished. That's all. And, I'm, and I was late too. So. Yeah, and you paid, and, the, and yeah. was, you got fined, and you and paid. So fined. that's all we're asking. Everybody does the same yeah, thing. Yeah, we just got carried away this year because we just, just did. in turmoil of the board. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I agree. We weren't but, on top of it, but that's not. But, but she sent she sent the applications out. Right, I yes, mean, she it did was in November. In November, yes, she did. 
He or she did. Five months later, they. But have then a, after that, there was no follow. Through. Yeah, but so let me ask you a question: through. If you're if you're trying to get your driver's license and it expires, are they the, the DOT, the Department of Transportation, the Registry of Motor Vehicles? Hey, you know what? You're late. You might make sure you, you get in to. I take can your, just go drive kids around on a bus. They'll pull your license. license yeah, they, they're not until, until you get stopped. Yeah. yeah. Or don't pay your taxes and see what happens. You'd be late for your taxes. Are they going to sit? Huh? And you had to pay 18% per annum, you know? Okay, so can we say that this um, takes priority? Yes. Of everything else that Tom has on his plate? Well, sure. I mean, other than an emergency, priority. other than other emergencies, yeah. yeah. Other than an emergency, yeah. 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 So we're talking 450. Yes. I'm going to get a yes. draft to you. Make sure everybody, all, the, all three of you see it. Okay. Make and we'll fire it out by you make a we'll fire it out by okay. So I make a motion that um, Tom send e letters e to yeah. the establishment that owes certificates and the establishments that owe money for their permits. Um, so all these establishments, none of them have a food establishment or retail permit. Um, have 48 hours to comply with either submitting the certificates or paying and submitting the certificates or else they will be fined according to um, at this time I don't have a title. The regulation. A food, a food, section a food, two. A food establishment regulations. Section two and section three. Three. Which will be a total of $450. Now that's not counting your permit either. Right. <clears throat> just the fines. That's the fine. Fines. These are these are just fines. So we, just we need fine. to say in there for those people that do owe for their permits that it's going to be the permit plus right. a fine. Right. Well, either no, yeah. either way, they have to pay for their permit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and then and if, but they, if they don't within forty eight hours, then it'll be permit plus fine. Yeah, then we'd probably be talking to town council. I mean, if they if yeah. they neglect to pay after then that, then, the I, then I don't know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Got to be in court. Got to. Let's see what the next step is. Yeah. It, okay, okay. So that's okay. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Lindsay Hayne, yes. Sue, yes. Great. Okay. I'm going to make a motion to adjourn unless there's any oh, other so, subjects. So we're going to drop the letter time and then uh, so it's be two yeah. letters, right? Yeah. One for yeah, yeah, I'll work with you on it. Too, if you want. Okay. And then I'll make sure that um, McKenzie and Gene <coughs> sign off on it. So what was the housing inspection on 503 College Highway? You know, I could remember. That's why I mm -hmm. circle back a bit. We're, I, 503 is where? Uh, I just wanted to. It's close. This is 454, so. Is it five sold that way? That way? Wait, wait, it's coming. Come to me. Um, yeah. Is it DPW or something? It was something minor, but I did want to bring to you that. Trash? All right, well, I'll, I'll um, uh, since we're right next to Dunkin' Donuts. Oh. Good, thing. perfect. That's exactly what it was. He's right. It's owned by the Dunkin' Donuts um, gentleman, Mr. Salima, the next door neighbor, the next door property, driving image. You're probably familiar with it, Joe. Um, they, I got a complaint from a neighbor um, about the previous tenants were using the dumpster and it was overflowing. I contacted Mr. Salima and uh, he called me back um, and said that. Uh, they they've been advised that the the tenants or you know leasing tenants that you know uh, make sure they don't put their their household waste or any other products in overflowing dumpsters and he was going to be removing those um, and making sure he's going to maintain the property because he does he does so maintain Dr. Donuts even though they haven't paid our other permit but that was a separate issue but that's what five hundred three thanks for looking that up. It's the old driving. I guess they're out. They're the driving not. image. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. They're out of business. There's a sign in the door. Yeah, oh. and that's why. So the, what the, was driving? 
driving in yeah, it's right next to Dunkin' Donuts. It doesn't matter. It's not uh, in existence anymore. <laughs> car, car parts. So good, yeah. Car parts. Right. So our next meeting is um, 17th, right? March yes. 17th. St. Patrick's Day. Ooh. Um, um, and we want to do for 6 p.m. again. Sure. Yeah, um, anything else we need to talk about before we adjourn? Mm -hmm. I think we haven't so. talked about now. I don't think so. Talked about a lot. Okay, so make a motion to adjourn. Go ahead. Make, make a motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. I I